Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Bourbon and Booze. I'm struggling today. Uh, I discovered <laughs> something interesting about myself. So if you want to find out, wait till the end. Today we are going to be looking at something I find really incredible and very much enjoyable. Uh, however, I've encountered several people who have uh, quite the varying uh, opinion that I do, and that is the Macallan Quest. I am a huge fan of the Macallan. I think that that may be one of the first scotches that I truly fell in love with. I've always been a scotch lover, but um, and I, I've grown to become an Isla uh, fan, a huge Isla fan. But uh, the Macallan 12 is something that I just loved, and I've explored quite a few of their uh, the different Macallans. However, usually they're way out of my price range, but I really do enjoy the Macallan, and it is on my bucket list to go to uh, the distillery. I have this lifelong dream, uh, not lifelong, but dream since the last five years or so, to um, hike the Speyside River. And the Macallan is on that river, and I want to visit every single um, distillery I really can. And that goal has been uh, planned and put off, planned and put off, planned and put off, and now it's planned again. So hopefully within the next year or so, I can make that dream come true and just head up to Speyside go to Ivernus, head up to Speyside and hike that to visit the Macallan because these are amazing uh, Scotch expressions. Now, the quest I find really sweet and floral and um, great flavor and super enjoyable. Uh, and I don't really understand why some people don't like it. So let's go ahead and get into this and talk about the Quest. So the Quest is the first in a series of Macallans um, called the Quest series. Um, and this is the first expression. I think they have like five more um, after this, different variations of this Quest. And what it is doing, it is trying to match up um, different casks so that it's, it's flavored or finished, aged and finished, in um, a multitude of different European and American casks. This first one is actually um, in four different uh, American and uh, European casks. Sherry uh, um, enhanced, I should say. Um, a couple of them are sherry casks, but um, they're sherry... Um, uh, flavored casks, I guess. I don't know how they're really doing that because they do talk about these are new casks um, from these different um, uh, woods around. And so this is a conversation that I really want to have with you guys. So make sure you're leaving those in the comments if you know more about the, the finishing series on this specific bottle. There's no age statement on it. They just... Um, bottle it when they think it's perfecto, and uh, it is 80 proof, uh, so it's going to be your typical um, mainline, uh, mainline sounds like a drug, mainline uh, scotch. This is a one liter bottle. I bought this at a duty free shop in Heathrow. It is initially meant as a travel exclusive, the whole Quest series, but I do believe that they're releasing those to stores now and it's no longer a travel exclusive. Uh, the price on this for one liter at Heathrow was about $80. Uh, I forget what the actual poundage was. However, because it's a Macallan and because uh, the rarity of it being travel exclusive, uh, the price of that is not going to be uh, 80 bucks if you find it, unless you find it at an airport. Um, I've seen the price on this on a online sales, you know, uh, the whiskey exchange and stuff like that for five, six hundred dollars. 
Uh, I'm not sure it's uh, worth the five, six hundred dollars. But let's go ahead and get into this. Oh, I forgot this had a cork issue. So we're going to try to get this out. There we go. I need to replace that cork. Very nice light color. I'm going to go ahead and stick that right there. Very nice light color, as you can see. Um, smells like a space side. I don't know where I want that. Smells like a space side. Nice aromatic florals. Sweetness of that sherry. It's muted um, on the nose, so you're not getting a lot of that vapor, that uh, uh, alcohol on it. And again, it's only 80 proof. <coughs> getting apple, green apple. It's very delightful. Is it my favorite? No, but I, I do like it. And I'm gonna say this is a four on the nose. Just wonderful. And I would say in a blind uh, taste, I would probably say this was a Macallan. I, I say stuff like that. I've never done a blind taste and I probably would completely screw it up. So. Uh, we're going to have to have Cody up here and set up uh, some blind scotches for him. Hmm. Mmm. Nice, cooling, doesn't have a lot of warmth to it, which is excellent. Um, I do like a little heat and a little warmth sometimes, like in the Islas, but this, this is cooling, sweet, um, almost like honey, vanilla, Little bit of those uh, uh, florals, and I always want to claim it's um, heather, but <laughs> I've never had heather to know of or smelled it. Um, I'm just assuming that's what it is because of the Scottish uh, countryside, but there's definitely some florals in there, and and that green apple, almost a little caramel as well. It's very muted, so I want to say it's a four, but I'm tempted to drop it to three and a half. But I'm going to say it's a four because we are talking a one out of five on that uh, barrel for um, cost. Now, I'm just going to have to go straight with it. There's no really bad burn bite. There's no um, funkiness to it on the back end. It's very smooth and and refreshing. Um, it leaves a nice um, flavor on the back end. I, I, I like it. Yeah, it's a four. I'm going to say it's a four across the board. Excellent. And I still not sure why this isn't appreciated as much from most of my friends who are scotch lovers. Uh, maybe I'm just too easy. That's a comment for you to put down there. Do you like the quest? Uh, we do have the uh, the 12 over here. I think it's just off the screen. Uh, and we did a um, uh, McAllen Reserve recently. It was excellent. I'm hoping to pick up some more uh, in the next uh, week or so uh, as I travel overseas. But um, like I say, visiting the McAllen is like, I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. It's like a pilgrimage for me. So hopefully I can go. And if you guys have ever been, leave those comments down below as well. So overall, this is a four on the Quest. I'm going to have to do a comparison with the 12 as well and anything I pick up while I'm overseas and, and compare them. And maybe my, uh, my opinion will um, be altered once I start comparing it with the others. And that's probably what my friends are doing. They, they've had the 12 and the 18 and several other versions, and they probably are compared it against that. So, mm -mm -mm. so tasty. All right, so what did I learn about myself? 
Oh, by the way, four. Um, I learned that I don't normally overdo it. And I overdid it last night. I overdid it last night. And it was a struggle to do today's episode. I've been binge watching a show that's been out for a long time, but I've never watched it. And it's got me fully hooked. Um, it's called uh, Designated Survival with Kiefer Sutherland. I'm only in season one, halfway through. Um, I, actually, more than halfway through. Last night, I uh, watched about six episodes because I couldn't stop watching it. And my wife had gotten some flavored generic store brand tonics, a mango tonic and a key lime tonic. I'm a big fan of key lime pie. Well, I decided I was going to have a key lime gin and tonic. And I couldn't stop. I just could not stop. And so I found out from my, about myself is usually I don't overdo it. Um, rarely do I overdo it. Uh, I know when my stopping point is. Um, but I was, I had a uh, Evan Williams 100, and then I switched to gin and tonics, which is probably a big mistake. And I drank five, six gin and tonics last night, watching the show until midnight. <laughs> it was a struggle this morning. So that's what I learned about myself. I'm addicted to key lime gin and tonics, and hopefully we can bring an episode where we... Um, kind of make that, maybe try to make some sort of um, homemade version uh, without that tonic flavor, like a regular tonic and come up with key lime. But I am also curious, what's your tipping point? What do you know about you or don't know about you when it comes to drinking alcohol? I have, uh, you know, a couple thousand bottles here and they're all mostly full or halfway full, very few are, are tiny because I don't overdo it. I just collect and I open every single one that I can. Um, like this one's been open, obviously before this episode. Uh, but I don't, I don't drink to excess. I mean, this is probably gonna be the only drink I have today, especially after last night. Uh, yeah, what is your tipping point and how do you know when to um, not go over the edge last night I'm not sure I, I knew where that point was and uh, yeah it was it was a little excessive so that's what I learned about myself I'm really interested in your thoughts on what you uh, uh, know about your tipping point what's your favorite can't put down drink. It's obviously key lime uh, gin and tonics for me. Uh, so we'll have to uh, be very careful in the future. Also really curious about what you think about the quest. Um, have you had any of the other expressions? Let me know uh, in those comments, uh, your tasting notes on those as well. And uh, I'm going to actually um, turn around, wait for Cody to come up tonight. Uh, from his house, and we're going to film a, a kind of a tour of the bar episode for tomorrow because we'll be on uh, a plane almost all day tomorrow as we head over to London. And then on Thursday, I believe, because uh, we're not filming anything ahead, uh, I do have one cocktail that's been sitting in my um, in file that I've never edited it and put up, and so I might spend the day on the plane tomorrow editing that and um, that'll be Fridays but otherwise Cody and I are going to film on location in uh, the UK uh, at pubs or uh, the Scotch Malt, Malt Whiskey Society we're going to go there because he's never been and uh, going to Cambridge do some shopping so we'll try to do some um, really good uh, episodes we might even pull some coffee in England's a great place for coffee and um, kind of test out our uh, our on location filming so that's that's the uh, the goals for the next few days I hope you have a great Tuesday um, try to stay cool I hear this is going to be the hottest two days on record and then hopefully it starts cooling down uh, from what I see and I hope you guys all have a wonderful Tuesday and we'll 
See you tomorrow. Remember, there's no bad whiskey. I don't care what my friends say. There is no bad whiskey. There's only good whiskey and great whiskey. And to me, the McAllen Quest is great whiskey. Cheers, y'all.